Hello everyone and welcome to episode 115 of the Cherry Heart Podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a crafty podcast where I show my crochet, knitting and sewing endeavours to you all. Um, you will find the show notes for this podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.com co.uk and I'll also pop the uh, show note link in the down bar below um, you'll be able to navigate this um, video using the video chapters um, again using the timestamps in the down bar below or clicking on the individual bars on the bottom of the screen and you can also find me on Instagram at Sandra Cherry HRT. Uh, that's where I'm most active, but elsewhere around the web, I'm Cherry Heart. Um, so welcome to the podcast. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer, and uh, thank you for joining me if you're new. I hope you enjoy it. Um, so I will begin with, um, well it's not a finished thing, but it's kind of an, a finished stage of a thing, which is a sewing project. So if you were here before, you'll have heard me talk about my Alice Caroline Flower Garden quilt blocks subscription. I um, was last year, so I was receiving the boxes each month last year and sewing the quilt blocks, hexagons in this case together. So I sewn them all together last time we spoke and I was just waiting uh, to finish the filler hexagons, which I have now done, but I've also sewed the top together. So that was, last time we spoke I needed to do the fillers and then I was saying I was with trepidation beginning to think about sewing the quilt top together. I'm just playing with this, trying to think of the best way to show you. Do I just hold a bit up? But I have sewn the quilt top together. And that gives you absolutely no idea at all, does it? Let's try. Let's try a different fold. There we go. I can't see anything. <laughs> Let me stand back and try and give you a bit of a better view. <laughs> this is really hard to show. Here we go. Okay, so it's quite difficult to show just um, by trying to hold it up. So what I'll probably do is take a bit of video of it sort of lying out on the bed so you can see. Um, uh, hopefully see, it'll see a bit more. I'm just trying to fold it up again now. Um, but yeah, hopefully you get the general idea that it is now together and in one piece. So... Um, these are the filler hexagons I spoke about. So this is the edge of a hexagon here and then I've just got these little bits. So that hexagon is part of the filler um, block. Yeah, so it'll square it all off so it'll be nice and square when it's finished. But yeah, it's actually sewing it together, it wasn't too bad, you know. I was really worried about it, but it was it was actually not as bad as I thought at all. Um the thing I was concerned about is just getting everything to match up because as I was making the individual hexagons, I tried to be as accurate as I could. Yeah, but it's hard to sort of get them exactly precise. And some of them, when I was putting them together, I didn't think I'd done brilliantly with. Sort of getting all the little edges, sort of all the shapes to match up exactly where they should in all the points, you know, getting all of these points to match perfectly. I think they're mostly pretty good. But there were some I was worried about. So when it came, so this is where this hexagon meets, so this big hexagon meets. Oh my goodness, so hard to show. So this is the edge of one hexagon and this is the edge of another. And so this white, these two white triangles and these two white triangles need to sort of match up to kind of look nice. And the same with these ones to make the diamonds. They're actually, that's actually two triangles. So I was worried about things like that, getting those white diamonds to sort of in here to match up nicely. 
and sort of where the corner points so that's the intersection of three big blocks as well um yeah so I was kind of worried about getting that all to fit in together when it was the bigger pieces I was dealing with but yeah I mean a little bit of encouragement was sometimes required but it wasn't too bad actually it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be so yeah it went quite well the thing that was actually quite challenging was getting all the papers out of the back so if I just show you some of the back here so I kept all of the papers in so I had all these sort of white um, cardboard pieces in uh, to keep the shape while I sewed the individual shapes together and I didn't actually I could have put pulled some out I suppose you know because where I'm joining on the edges I could have pulled out some of the shapes from the middles but I just left all the paper in and thought I'll tackle it when I um, you know once I've sewn them together so yeah it was quite tricky to get the papers out so I used glue fabric glue um, to stick the pieces on and that was okay I had been quite um, what's the word generous with my glue <laughs> on some of them so some of them were stuck down quite well but that you know would just peel back relatively easily but the problem I had was where I put the fabric so I was very you know I was thinking I had to get the shapes very accurate so I was pulling the fabric not pulling it around the shapes but just folding it over sort of nice and crisply thinking as clean as I could get them the better it would be which it probably was and I think that perhaps helped with the accuracy but when it came to sewing the pieces together it meant I was quite often going through the cardboard instead of just getting the strands of fabric um, so when I came to get the paper out, I was literally having to sort of perforate the paper out sometimes. So I think my, I guess the learning curve from that was, that would be not to be quite so vigorous with the, um, or you know, just be a little bit more careful how I folded the hexagons together, or just perhaps just be a little bit more careful to make sure I was stitching right on the very, very edge, rather than sort of, I think there's a couple of places where I guess I just got lazy and just got used to stitching through and had gone not far into it but enough to make it difficult to get the shapes to get out. So that was my biggest problem with it. I'll pop some footage in now of like the whole thing so you can see it. So I have uh, ordered my wadding to go in the middle because I haven't got any left. So I've ordered that and I've already ordered the binding because it's going to have some some of this uh, lovely Liberty fabric to be the binding as well. And you could also purchase um, another piece of, well, two pieces of Liberty fabric to sew together to put on the back. But I decided not to do that because you know Liberty fabric isn't cheap and I've already sort of paid for all these lovely boxes and because that was in installments that kind of seemed a bit more manageable um, but it's only going to be on the back you know it's the front I'm going to show off so I figured I'd just have something a bit plainer and simpler on the back um, yeah just a simple plain cotton on the back probably so yeah I've just got to sandwich it together now and then undertake the task of actually quilting it which I will do just on my little home machine um, and I have done it before with quilts but it isn't easy it's quite an undertaking to sort of manipulate it and get it under the quilt um, I know there are well I say I know there are places, I know in America there are places you can send it away and get it quilted for you um, but I, I'm not really sure if that's a viable option here I, I think I did look at, at it one time, a long time ago but it was there was like one place that was even vaguely near me and it was very very expensive so I think when I looked last time I thought oh, I think I'll just manage on my home machine and I'm I think the same thing this time really I'll just 
I'll just do my best on my home machine. I won't do anything sort of fancy. I tried some sort of free, what do you call it, freehand, free motion quilting one time and just the machine just did horrible things with the cotton that was spooling up on the back even though I'd put the feed dogs down and all of that business. So I'm not going there but I will just do some straight lines and sort of follow the lines of the hexagons and yeah kind of just have some diagonal lines through I think sort of basically sort of following what stitching lines are there as much as I can and base it off that I think but yes that is getting there and it, it kind of partially feels like the biggest hurdle is done now so hopefully hopefully it won't take me too much longer to finish it but yeah I'm not looking forward to the quilting either I must admit but I am very pleased to have this whole top done that does feel like a big achievement so that is satisfying so that's that one um, and from there I'm going to talk about a project in progress so that's a knitting one so again I spoke about this last time I'd started it last time and it's my knitted vest or tank top so I'm making the Pyrrhic, Pyrrhic vest which is that one there um, uh, Teche or Tetbeche possibly knitwear it's Orland Souche is her name um, and this is how I'm getting on with it not too badly not too badly at all so I think last time we spoke I had literally just joined under the arms I think I was about here um, so I finished what's happened here um, so I finished the ball I was working on um, which took me down to sort of here somewhere and then I thought I would go back and just do the um, what do you call it the ribbing so well there's no sleeve as such there's just a sort of opening ribbing so I did that on both sides and I did the neck as well because I thought I'll do that sort of slightly more faffing around job and then all I've got to do is finish sort of knitting the body and the hem which should be easier so and also I kind of wanted to see how it looked with those on because it's when I was just knitting it before and it was all curling up it looked quite small but I think having seen the sleeves on it now it's looking not too bad this neck is a bit smaller than I would have ideally liked if I was making this again I might sort of scoop it down a bit more um, but like I said when I started knitting it last time I didn't quite realise exactly how I was forming the neck so I didn't really understand ahead of time enough to be able to modify it so I think now I would perhaps have a go at modifying it so there's two different necklines in this pattern one had like a sort of folded hem and one was just a plain hip hip ribbed hem um so I have sorry that's my stitch markers banging so I started, I was going to do the um, folded hem because I thought sort of the bit of weight to it might make it lie nicely. So you see how this is curling back. Sometimes they want to do that, don't they? Curl away. So I thought I'll try the folded hem, that sort of bit of extra weight and thickness to it might stop that happening and sort of look quite clean and nice. So I knit it and then you have to sort of stitch it to itself on the inside to sort of get the fold and I started stitching it around and this was just folding back like crazy and I was just making a bit of the hash of sort of stitching it to the inside so I kind of un just undid it I thought oh I'll just do the ribbed it'll be easier so I worked that but actually it's still folding back like crazy so I'm not sure I'm particularly happy with that my part of the reason why I didn't do the ribbon at the start as well is because it has this um, well it's a tubular bind off basically it's like a stitched bind off you have to do it with a needle and sort of sew it but what it's actually created as it turns out I didn't realize this is a tubular cast off which actually I really like um, 
so when I read the instructions and I saw it, it was like, get your needle out and start stitching. I was like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'll do the folded, I'll do the folded neckline and that weight thing. Hopefully that will help and it won't be so bad. But I also really don't like stitching, <laughs> trying to stitch the folded neckline down and match it up with the stitches. I always seem to make a hash of it, as I did this time. So I thought, oh, I'll go back and I'll do the stitching anyway. But even though it's a bit of a faff to start, once you get the hang of it, it's actually not too bad. So I kind of wish that I had known that so I could have done the same for the sleeves. So I did the sleeves first and then I did the neckline. But if I'd done the neckline first, I think I would have copied that cast off for the sleeves. Now, for some reason, in the pattern she directs you specifically to do that cast off on the neck but she doesn't she just doesn't say anything about how to cast off the sleeves which i thought was interesting i mean i could put the sleeves back on the needles and cast off again i suppose i don't know it might be because maybe it only works on ribbon and you've got this sort of um plain bit here sort of a little strip of knit stitches there Perhaps I shouldn't have taken that, no, down the sleeve. I just did it, carried on the same as in pattern. I think that's what the pattern said to do. I'm pretty sure that's what the pattern said to do actually, but I could have not done that, I suppose, ribbed that bit as well and then done that bind off. I don't know whether I'll bother, well, to be honest, between you and me, I probably very likely will not bother to go back just to cast off. But yes, anyway. All of that to say, it's coming on and it sort of feels like the bulk of it is done really now and I've just got the nice easy knit down the body. I need to try it on and sort of see how much longer I need it um, because I'm at the stage where you knit sort of until you want to sort of add the hem so I probably don't need to add that much more actually. Where's my waistline? There we go. So with a hem probably don't need to do too much more to that so hopefully that will be a finish next time we next time we meet next time we speak um oh the yarn i haven't told you the yarn have i so i'm using drops nord for this and the colorway is 07 i don't know why i'm showing you a seven you know what a seven looks like um yeah and I'm on the, so I had four balls of this and I'm on the fourth ball now. So, looking good. It feels really nice and soft as well because it, I quite like the, it looks a little bit more rustic, but I can't really wear rusticy yarns. But this is, um, this has got alpaca content, so it's quite soft. Um, I'll just run through, I did say last time, so 45% alpaca, 30% polyamide and 25% wool, so there's a nice blend there. Um, so next I'll do a quick, quick, quick patterns in progress. So last time I spoke to you, um, I showed you these little doilies that I made in Kath Kidson colours. There you go, just so you can see all four of them again. Um, which is based on my painted anemones blanket motif. Um, yeah, but I've just added a bit more of a board around each one. To, um, and I also made these pot holder versions. Right, sorry about that. Run out of battery. Um, yes, yeah, so I was just showing you these pot holders that I made as well, again based on the same motif, but uh, with a back, oops, worked on and a different edge there and a little loop to hang up. So I was saying about making a pattern just to show how I adapted those. So I'm glad to say I've actually made a decent start on that already and it should be ready to come out very soon. I'm just going to do, um, I've got weaving some ends here. I made so and I made another set of these doilies because I kind of want to see how they look with this border as a blanket because I think they could look quite nice like that as well. Um, so 
that's kind of uh, part of the reason I made another set of those. But yeah, I was just going to do a little tutorial just to show how I worked through um, to make the joining of the back and the front together. And then that will probably be ready to go. So hopefully next time I'll be able to say to you it's and available. But um, I'll say on Instagram once it's out, so just keep an eye there if you would like to know. And obviously on my blog, cherryheart.co.uk. Um, yeah, so that's the pattern in progress. And then the other thing I just thought I would talk about with you is a plan, a blanket plan, an upcoming project idea. So I follow, I think, did I talk about this before? I can't remember. There is a lovely lady on Instagram called Therese. Um, she's Tipsy Tessie on Instagram and I'm just going to get her Instagram up to show you. So that's her name there. And she just has these really lovely pictures of crocheted no, oh, it's not loading because I've got no internet up here. Um, crocheted quilt. <clears throat> um, that she's made. It's more there. And I've just, I've followed her account for quite a while now and I love her work. Oh, look, these ones. This area here, very inspiring. <laughs> yeah, so I followed her work for a long time and although I've admired it, I thought, oh, all those sort of colour changes to make the triangles of the quilts. I don't know, there's a lot of work in that, I'm not sure. Not sure I could manage it. Anyway, I've been changing my bedroom, um, redecorating, and I just thought one of those sort of style quilts would just look so beautiful in there. So I've been having a little play. So I, my original idea was I was going to have stars like this. So this isn't the colour I'm going for. This is just, um, I use some spare yarn. Um, so I just wanted to try making those nice triangle uh, colour change squares. See how that would go, see how it would look and, and sort of plan out kind of how much yarn I would need and how many squares I might need and things. So there's that one which I like, but then I also like, I thought I'd have a go at this style as well. Also this was a very, well I'll come back to the colours in a minute. Yeah, so there's this style as well which I think I might like even more. So my initial idea was this because so I've still got eight solid colour squares in here. So that each of the white corner ones is a solid square and each of the brown middle ones is a solid square. And I only have to do the colour change on eight squares. So it's sort of a half and half. So that was my original idea. But then I kept looking at this style of star and thinking how much I liked that. So this has only got the four colour square, uh, four corner squares, sorry, that are solid, and every other one is a colour change square. So there's more colour changing, which means more ends. <laughs> I mean, there's quite a lot of ends anyway. Ends are, uh, you know, uh, going to be a feature of this blanket. But I think I kind of prefer how that looks. I just really like how crisp this square in the middle is. The, from the, even using the colour changes it just looks nice and clean and lovely. So to do this colour changing I followed um, Tipsy Tessie's tutorial, she's got um, a little video on her Instagram of how she does it so I just went by what she did. Um, yeah. So that's how I did mine, exactly the same as she's doing hers, but I am using my modular join to join them on the back as much as I can. Um, and I've got a tutorial for that under my Battenberg blanket, which again was squares. Alternate colour squares I had, uh, like a sort of chess checkerboard, like a Battenberg cake, hence the name. Um, yeah, so I, I came up with a sort of way of joining them through on the back as you go along. So there is a tutorial up for that if you'd like to know more of that, but wherever I can, I'm trying to use that method to join these, just to save having 
all the ends from the joining as well. If I can kind of just use the squares to join, it just saves a just saves a tiny little bit of work. I don't know it makes much difference in the scheme of things, but that's my plan. Um, yes, so the actual colours I want to use, let me show you, I've pulled a few bits together, is this. Um, so very pastel, sort of pinks, soft pinks and blues, and I've also popped, there's like a soft grey in there as well, but it's mostly sort of these two colours are kind of my focus for it. Um, so I've got some minis in here, I've got some leftover yarns in here that I can use. Um, and I've also got this lovely skein which looks to be a really nice colour. So I'm hoping I've got enough of my sort of contrasty colour ones. That makes me very happy looking at that. Love that. And then for the white colour, so previously when I did my Battenberg blanket, I used this, which is Drops Baby Merino. Um, but that's officially a sport weight yarn, or at least on <sighs> Wool Warehouse it's listed as a sport weight yarn. What does it say on here? Yeah, 24 stitches. Um, gauge is the sort of average gauge whereas 28 would be fingering weight and all of these are fingering weight so I thought maybe I just I mean not that there was a problem on my Battenberg blanket I just had a whole load of um, scraps that I used for that most of that was fingering weight or sock yarn or and there were some sports in there and I sort of pulled any that were really really thin and made two small squares or really fat and made two fat squares of the scrapped yarns. I did discard a few but most of it just worked fine and it kind of all pulls out and once you've got them joined and they're all sort of pulling against each other it kind of worked out fine. But I thought since this is sort of going to be you know uh, two colours on the one square maybe I better make sure it matches more exactly so I thought I'll order some other yarns to see so what I wanted so the do uh, the covers I've got in my room now are very white and this is quite cream if you can see how different they are so I wanted to make sure I got more of a white color than the creamy color and I think the when I made my Battenberg blanket it's quite a creamy white so it just looks kind of discoloured and wrong against a whiter sheet. So I think this sort of whiter colour is what I want. So I ordered a few test ones to see what they would be like for colour and just to work with and the weight because, you know, there's a yarn weight, it's not just a thing, is it? It's kind of a range, so you can be at the thinner end or the fatter end or whatever. So I ordered some... I ordered this because it's a really nice yarn, it's a fingering weight yarn and I thought it would be a nice sort of standard fingering weight. Um, it's super wash and merino, it feels lovely but they didn't have the white so I thought well I'll try an off white in case it's still really white enough but actually it's quite creamy. Again if you compare it to my white white that I'm going for. I mean it's it's not super creamy but it is creamier. It looks less so on the camera to be fair but in in real in real life they do look quite distinctly different. So I wasn't totally happy with that how that looked against the um bed covers. And then I ordered some slightly more economical versions as well because you know I'm going to need a lot. This wasn't too bad because you've got 100 grams here. So I've got twice the weight that I've got in these other balls. But I went for, um, so Drops Fable, um, this was colour 100, I can't remember if they called this white or off-white. Um, but again it's a little bit too off-white for my liking when I actually see it in reality, but that was the whitest colour they had. 
and then I also got these two so drops flora and uh, that's color 02 which I assume I just went for the white again but that's a wool and alpaca so this one I said didn't I this is superwash merino and nylon 7525 the drops fable is 75% wool 25% polyamide this one is 65% wool 35% alpaca now this one is my favorite it feels really nice and it looks really nice and it's also nice and white without being too well I'll show you too much like this basically and my other choice so this is by West Yorkshire Spinners and it's called Bo Peep and it's Tooth Fairy and this is what is it 48% nylon Oh, 52% Falkland wool, so I'm assuming merino, but I don't know that, I suppose. And 48% nylon. So this one feels really lovely and soft. It's actually, so it's a luxury baby yarn. So it, you know, it feels like a baby yarn. It feels beautifully soft. It would be perfect for a baby yarn, which is what it's designed to be. But it just, again, I don't know if you can see it. This is the whitest, the most pure white of all of them. And it's almost... A little bit too white it's almost sort of too chemically bleached white if that makes sense where this looks more of a natural white again I don't think you can tell that on the screen here at all um, but these were the two sort of closest so I did try squares in each of these to see how it looked so this one with this stitch marker this is the drops flora which I really liked but it's just a little tiny bit too thin and the strands separate out a tiny bit too much I don't again I don't think you'll see it on the camera so see how the yarn is sticking through a bit there where I've gone over the darker color now this is a you know this is there's a high contrast here this is a very dark color so it's not a totally fair test because the colours I'll be going over in reality are a lot paler so it perhaps wouldn't be a problem in reality but just like the feel of it as I was working up so the consistency of this even though the colour wasn't what I wanted the consistency of this matched up beautifully and it felt really nice to work with and like there was no difference but with this one when I was going between the two it, it just felt a little bit thinner it felt lovely and I really want to use it but just for this particular project probably not quite right but the colour was good and then this one is marks the bow peep square so again the the consistency of this one was better I mean you can still see it through but like I say it's not really a totally fair comparison because this is such a dark um, contrasting colour yarn I'm going over here but there's just something about the white again I don't know if it'll pick up on the camera so I don't know if you can see sort of the difference between this one and this one it's just so sort of brilliant dazzling white it just looks a little bit odd is the only way I can describe it and just the texture of it is so soft as well it's kind of not matching these quite as nicely as I'd like these are going to be mostly merino nylon blends because that's what I tend to go for there's a little bit of silk in some like that one for example um yeah so I whoops made a huge crash so yeah so that wasn't suitable these two weren't suitable because of color and these two this one I felt was wasn't suitable because of color and this one I wasn't 100% happy with the yarn so I thought well I'll just try you know I tried all the kind of feasible ones when I placed the order I went for everything that kind of looked like it could be a possibility but so I thought I'd try my drops of merino with it and just see how different that does feel and actually when I worked it up it was by far the best one so all the rest of the squares in here apart from this one and this one are worked up in the drops of merino and like I say with this dark colour yes you can still see a little bit of the um, brown peeping through but I did try Oof. 
I did try a couple of paler colours just to see how it would work and to make sure it wouldn't show and it doesn't at all. So that's using the good old Drops Merino. So I think what I did with my Battenberg blanket I probably had the off-white of this because there is an off-white and a white so I ordered some white to sort of say well maybe that colour is more what I'm looking for and yes it is. So this is the perfect match. So after all that buying other yarns and doing all the research and all the investigation trying to be all conscientious and um, you know do the very best thing it turned out to be the stuff I knew about and was using anyway that I decided was best. So there you go I guess it's just a very fine sport weight then but it matches beautifully um, with a lot of these that I've got in here I know because they're the same brands oh gosh that's when I put my head down and my hair comes in it goes really bright doesn't it um yes and then some of the others well you know I can't say exactly because I have got different brands in here but I think this is going to work out overall to be the best match and it covers over the carried round yarn beautifully the color is good lovely to work with so that's my winner so now I've done my test squares and sorted out my yarns I think I can actually start making the blanket in the proper official colors which is quite exciting um yeah so anyway that is what I'm going to do and I think I'm going to go for that one because they just look so pretty and so quilty what do you think what would you go for the solid star or the open middle star I don't know what to call it solid star or open star I could mix both I suppose but I feel like I feel like I probably won't <laughs> so yeah I think this one is calling to me though to be honest even though it's more work it would be wouldn't it the one that appeals to me most who would be the one that's the most work that's absolutely typical so that's all I have to show you this week thank you for joining me and um, hopefully I shall be back with another podcast very soon um, until we next speak look after yourselves and enjoy some lovely peaceful crafting moments if you possibly can bye Yeah. Very good. Well done. Oh, see a thing. <laughs>